every person he during his lifetime he always hears and listen and learn from his surroundings on what the truth is um, but unfortunately in reality also most of the teachers that are guiding us uh, themselves are lack of a big portion of of the complete truth because the truth is way way larger than the capacity of one person um, unless that person is really nullifying himself and cleaning and purifying and cleansing and dedicating himself completely to to the to 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 the to the divine supervision of of our lives and if you try to go and and learn about the creator from books or from lectures of people or from like life experience whatever so always you're going to be limited because always the 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 amount of knowledge that you can earn in that direction is limited you can study one hour a day or even eight hours a day there's still limit to those eight hours even if you learn 12 hours 16 hours a day you're going to sit and focus and learn it's only going to be 16 hours even if it's for 60 years still there is an amount to that but when a person is focusing on the light of his soul and trying to connect himself to the creator from within the amount of knowledge and deep understanding that he can enjoy from is endless it does not have no capacity it does not have no shape it does not have no form it comes like an inner spring that just rise and come up and washing and purifying you with no end and people because that they are very fast to doubt themselves and to criticize themselves. So they're not counting on themselves that they are capable of learning and finding and achieving high and huge goals in their lives. And therefore those people, they choose, unfortunately, to go and to count on other people to teach them. They pass the responsibility for their learning, for their teaching, for their spiritual development on the backs of other people. Even if those people are great, even if those are righteous rabbis or qualified teachers, really wise people with, with solid life experience, still the amount and, and the, the quality of the teachings that you can perceive from a human being will always be limited under the limitations of time and space and knowledge that that person has but when you throw yourself into the depths of your soul, and for that a person really should put all his effort back into his own mind to use the inner tools that have been given to us, like our senses, our thoughts, our feelings, allowing ourselves to understand what does it mean that I have a heart. A heart is not only that pump that, uh, bring oxygen into my bloodstream and into the veins and, and running in my body. A, that's not the only heart that I have. I have also a spiritual heart. The mind of a person is not only the way that his thoughts are going in patterns or the physical brain that he carries in his skull. It's something much greater than that. It's an inner connection to a divine form a spiritual existence of your highest soul. And when you let yourself flow into your true self, when you allow yourself to be who you are and you just go with it, then fire cannot control you and then water cannot wash you and then the desert cannot dry you and the distance and the effort that you need to put in life will not can exhaust you and will not take and drain your power. You will find yourself that you're able to run to longer distance than you were imagined before and that you're able to achieve bigger and much greater things than 
what you assumed that you would. And things can become very, very spiritual and can bring you to very, very high levels when you allow yourself to connect yourself to your inner truth. Now, even though that those words looks, sounds very, very vague, like, okay, what is he talking about? Connecting yourself to your true self inside your heart, your mind. Like, I see Michael over there asking those questions. It's okay. So, like, in reality, I'll tell you why it must come in that form that it will be vague and that it won't be clear. Because there is a search and it's very individual and it's different. When I'm connecting myself to Hashem, it will always be totally different than how you will do it. One can do it while singing a certain song. One can do it while doing it bodhidut and praying an individual prayer. One by confessing, doing tshuva, and one by praising Hashem and thanking Him for His grace. One can do it by being nice and honest with people. And one can do it by giving charity. One can, can, can decide to go on a journey and one can decide to stay home and to stick to his errands and to his obligations. And by that, he will reconnect himself to the Creator. So it's very, very different. And the only way that a person can know exactly what he should do and how he should connect himself to the Creator is by being honest with himself. A friend of mine today asked me a question about his shalom bayit, peace in his house, his relationship with his wife. And I told him, you need to take certain responsibilities. You need to fix certain things. So he told me, what are you talking about? Which are those things? Tell me. So I told him, you know about yourself what really you don't do right. Like, you don't, I, you don't need me to tell you. Like, you know yourself. When you're being wrong, when you're being selfish, when you're trying to hide some stuff, when you're not being simply honest and nice and kind, you know it. Like, like that I know about myself when I messed up. I know that I just messed up. Like if I was wrong, if I was selfish, if I, if I was ignoring certain feelings that I had, if like I put myself in, like in, in higher in, in the list of, of my uh, important things and, and I made myself to be so important I can re I'm the only one that can really recognize that about myself so no one can tell me what to do and this is why no one can also tell you what you should do but those rules of being honest of being truthful of being kind are general and to use them and really to enjoy the result of of using those holy tools and weapons that we've been given by the Creator will depend only in the pure intention of your heart to improve. If you want to improve, if you want to come closer to the Creator, you will do it. If you really gonna want to know the truth about yourself, about your life mission, it's gonna be revealed to you. There are stories of the Baal Shem Tov, Baal Shem Tov that is coming to a synagogue and a per person that doesn't know how to, to read. He doesn't know the Jewish letters and he's just holding the Siddur and holding it like that and saying to Hashem, Hashem, I, even though I don't know how to read, even though I don't know how to pray, please accept that prayer. And that prayer, the Baal Shem Tov testified that was the prayer that opened the gates of heaven in that year. And a kid that didn't know uh, the halakha, the Jewish rule, and came to the synagogue with a flute, and in Yom Kippur, that you're not allowed to, to touch instruments, and you're not allowed for sure to pray, he took out the flute and, and started playing in, in Neila of Yom Kippur. And the Baal Shem Tov said, that, that flute that came, that, that, that tune that came out of this kid's heart opened the gates and canceled the decrees. But that's a violation. This is something that you shouldn't do. This is something that you cannot do. But here you have the Baal Shem Tov that is coming and telling you, listen, that act came out of a pure heart of a child. So you see that that child that doesn't know the rules of halakha and going even against it by mistake, not in purpose, but 
doing something out of his heart and breaking those gates and removing those obstacles and, 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 and canceling decrees, horrible decrees in heaven. And another guy that doesn't know even how to read Hebrew and just hold the Siddur and asking from Hashem to take the prayers that are written in that Siddur because he himself doesn't know even how to read it. But you, Hashem, know that if I would know, I would pray. So please take those prayers. He doesn't even know what he's saying. And that kind of prayer that, like, if you would pray like that, for sure you would kill yourself for that, right? You would criticize yourself. Oh, you don't even know how to read Hebrew. You held the Siddur upside down. You did it all wrong. Like, look at you. You're so pathetic. You're such a low life. You're so annoying. Like, again, look at yourself. Like, you would kill yourself. Why? Just because you don't understand the real perspective on life. You ignore the goodness of your soul. You're just killing yourself for no reason. If you will be honest and sincere, I'm not saying color your eyes in pink and, and put your positive eyeglasses. No, I'm I, like, be realistic. Just be simple and honest. I'm asking you just to be honest. Aren't you a good person? Don't you really want to do good? Like, it, like, is that so, like, whoa, rude to ask? No. The truth is that we are good people and that we have good souls and that we have good intentions and we're scared many times to be who we are. We're afraid to be hurt. We're afraid that we won't be accepted. We're afraid that we won't be answered. And therefore, because of all those fears, we lack of confidence and, and, and lack of self-esteem to go and to demand what it really belongs to us. The greatness and the beauty and, and, and the wealth of the Creator belongs to His children. And very, very large things are going on in this world that we cannot recognize, that we cannot understand, but they are happening. Think about this like I wrote today on Facebook that we think to ourselves from our point of view, oh, Hashem, where is He? We're calling Him and He's not answering. What if Hashem feels the same about us? Now you're going to say, no, but listen, He is above and He is strong and He is powerful. But look, I want to remind you, Hashem sent us to this world from being one with Him. We were one. One moment before we came down to this world, we were Him and Him was us. Because there was no separation in the world to come, in heaven before creation, right? So only after taking the decision to send that portion of godliness that today is us, that is the soul of Adam and Eve, and all of, all of life forms known as of today, only after taking that decision, the world became real, exist, started to, to, to take place. Now, what if in that moment that the Creator sent Himself down to earth, He lost touch with Himself, and we are now all trapped here, and we're all different, and we're all isolated and we're all divided and we're all looking for things and one is looking for money and one is looking for pleasure and one is looking to hide and one is looking to whatever and everyone are busy and everyone are trapped in their own life and everyone are running somewhere else and the creator lost track he's screaming hey come back to me where are you where have you been what are you doing listen to me stop chasing after that nonsense like Hey, come back, listen. And we can't hear. Our ears are, are, are plugged. We can't hear. We don't hear. One is chasing after women, and one is chasing after money, and one is chasing after her fears, and one is chasing after a house with gardens and swimming pools, and one is chasing after a new Corvette, and everyone, and others are chasing after Torah, and learning Gemara, and whatever, like, but everyone are disconnected from an inner voice that is saying, hey, come back. Like it was the first time of the Creator to create a creation as well. 
no one made no preparation for this thing. And you can say, no, Hashem, He knew, He knows, whatever. Look, the one that is in the biggest trouble of them all is Him. The one that is suffering the most is Him. The one that feels and experiences all the pain of all of His creations for thousands of years is Him. He lives inside of us. He's inside our emotional bodies. He experiences our trauma. He feels and hears all of our thoughts. He sees when we, we are in distress. And He is a loving parent. And He's super sensitive and caring with no end. And His love and compassion are the, 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 the worst blessing that, he, that the person can bless himself to have. He's so merciful that he suffers all day long, something like Lisa or, or something similar to that. All day long suffering. What's going to be with him? What's going to be with her? And what's going to be with her? And texting me every seven minutes. What's going to be with him? What's going to be with her? And that's the message I got from him today. And that's the message I got from him yesterday. And that's what they told him. And that's what she told me. And that's what I'm telling them. And bless you. <laughs> Hashem is, uh, is being reflected in the face of Lisa. So you need to be positive and to recognize the goodness of yours and to come back to your goodness, to come back to the Creator from within and not to let the outside external world to distract our thoughts. Oh no, I must earn this, I must gain that. Nothing in the physical world has existence. Nothing. Nothing exists. It's all an illusion. The only reality that there is, is if you are honest and truthful and loyal and good and kind and connected with your intention to what you do in life. And by that you should count and be confident that the Creator is with you and that He will reveal His loving kindness on us all in no time and going to satisfy our minds and bless our hearts and everything we do will be successful and will bring us to great joy and true happiness and complete redemption to all wide world and to all the creations around us. Amen. Thank you.